In this video, I'm going to show you an equivalence definition to the induction uh, principle we saw in the previous videos that is of great importance in the axiomatic set theory. We're going to start with strong induction. So the strong induction says it's very similar to the induction principle we saw. We have P of n, that's um, something we have to prove about natural numbers. So to prove that this is true, we use two steps. The basic, the basic step says P of 1 is true. And the inductive step says that for all natural numbers, if P of 1, P of 2, and so on until P of n, all these are true, then we have P of n plus 1 is true. Now what's the difference between these and the induction principle? Well, for induction, the, the only difference is in this second step. Right here we have that P of 1 is true, P of 2 is true, and so on until P of n are all true, and that implies P of n plus 1. For the regular, also called weak, Induction, we have that P of n implied P of n plus 1. But here we have P of, now in strong induction, we have P of n, but also have P of n minus 1 and P of 1, all of those. All this imply, implies a P of n plus 1. So, this is a strong induction. Now, another definition will will be the well-order figure, a uh, well-order principle. So we, and you're gonna have to believe me on this for now, we will prove it later. Now, the well-order uh, property says that every non-empty subset of the natural numbers has a least element. This is pretty obvious if you think about it. Well, you have the the real line, but let's just think about the natural numbers. We have 1, 2, 3, and so on. And if I take a subset of the natural numbers, let's say I start here, then every time I have a least element, okay? But to prove this, we need to believe in the induction principle. So that's what we're going to be proving, and it's extremely important. And it's that the principle of induction we saw in earlier videos implies the well-ordering property. The well-ordering property implies strong induction, and strong induction implies the regular or, or weak induction. And you may be asking yourself, okay, but why is this important? And that is because all this has to do with the axiom, the axiom of choice. I will not get into this because it's, it's very advanced mathematics, but just for the, the curious ones to want to look it up. So let's start with the first implication. We want to prove that induction implies well-ordering property. So to do this we're gonna do it by contradiction. Ah, oh, let's suppose that S, that's a subset natural numbers. It's a non-empty subset. Let's suppose S has no least element. So S subset of the natural numbers non-empty has no, no least element. Okay? And all we know is that the induction principle is true. 
So for the induction, we have to create a PFN that we can prove it, we can use this because this is true, we can use induction to prove PFN. So I'm gonna just define a property and try to prove it with induction. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say that M, this is something I'm, I'm gonna prove M, belongs, uh, does not belong to S for every M smaller or equal to N. Okay, so I take the number 3. Well, uh, the numbers 1, 2 and 3 do not belong to S. Okay, what I want to do is I want to prove that this is true for all natural numbers. Then it would be true for 100. Then all the numbers from 1 to 100 would not belong to S. It would also be true for 10 millions. And then all the numbers from 1 to 10 millions would not belong to S. And if I can prove this for all natural numbers, for all N, if I can prove this for all natural numbers, then S would be empty. And that, that would contradict my hypothesis that S is a non-empty subset the natural numbers. Okay, let's stop talking and just start proving this. I want to use induction, so base case p of 1. Well, this is true. Why? Because if 1 belongs to S, then 1, 1 is an a list a list element of s and that would uh, contradict my hypothesis okay so one would be okay so p of one is true now induction has two steps base case and the inductive step. So P of n is true. We are assuming this and we want to prove P of n plus 1. So P of n is true. That means that m equals 1, 2, and so on, n minus 1, n. This do not belong to us. And well, if m plus 1 belong to s, then m plus 1 would be a least element. Ah, then this would contradict my hypothesis, then m plus 1 does not belong to S. And I already have that the numbers I, I already have this. So then P of M plus 1 is true. And what we're using here is inductive I induction. So P of N is true for all n a natural number. Ah, oh, okay, but if this is true for all natural numbers, then s is empty. Contradiction. I started my my proof saying that saying that S was non-empty. Well, but then the contradiction is because I assumed that S had no least elements. Then any subset of the natural numbers has a least element, and that's the well-ordering principle. That's uh, what we wanted to prove. 
let's now move on and prove our second demonstration. We want to prove that the well ordering principle implies strong induction. So what we're gonna do is suppose we have proven that P of N we proved P of N with strong induction. And we want to show that P of N is true for all N natural numbers. So what we're gonna do is again define a set. Define S the subset of the natural numbers that verify that P of N is not true for them. We want to see that S is empty because we want to see that P of N is valid for all natural numbers so the subset of the set of all natural numbers that do not verify P of N would be none. So to prove that S is empty let's assume that S is not empty it is not empty then s is a subset of the natural numbers so the well ordering principle says that there is there is a least element in s in S. So let's call it K plus 1. K plus 1, okay? Now we proved that P of N was true with strong induction. And then what we have is P of 1, P of 2, P of K are true. Okay, and that's something we know. But the proof by strong induction said that if all these are true, then P of K plus 1 is true. Go again and look at the definition. Now S was the subset of all natural numbers that do not verify P of N. And we said that K plus 1 belongs to S. And here what we're saying is that K plus 1, P of K plus 1 is true. Hmm. Then K plus 1 does not belong to S then we must have that S is empty and that proves what we wanted to prove. Now let's have a look at the last property, the last implication. We want to show that strong induction implies the regular or the weak induction. Okay, so let's assume we have proven that P of N implies P of N plus 1. Then automatically we have that P of 1, P of 2, and so on, P of and that all of this imply p of n plus 1. This is not exactly what we wanted to prove, okay? We are starting with the induction and proving the strong induction. So this is actually the other way around. This is that induction implies strong induction. So let's actually prove this. 
let's suppose PFN. PFN is a statement that we can prove. Suppose PFN a statement we can prove. PFN with strong induction, okay? Because strong induction is our hypothesis, strong indu induction is, is valid, it's a, a real way of proving properties. So we can take a statement and prove it with strong induction. Then we are going to define Q of n, that's going to be P of 1 and P of 2 and so on to P of n. So Q of 1 of n is true when all the P of n for n equal to 1 to n are, are all true. Okay, so P of n is equal to Q of n for natural numbers. Because if I can prove P of n for all natural numbers, then I would have Q of n. Let's, let's prove Q of n with induction. So Q of 1 is true. This is because P of 1 is true. And P of 1 is true because we were able to prove it with strong induction. Suppose that Q of n is true and we want to show to show that q of n plus 1 is true okay so what we know is q of n is true and what is q of n well i define q of n as p of 1 P of 2 and P of n. So if Q of n is true, that means that all this is true. And by strong induction, this implies P of n plus 1 is true. Oh, but then what I have is that P of 1 is true. P of 2 is true, P of n is true, and that P of n plus 1 is true. And this is Q of n plus 1. And this is this is true, this left side, then Q of n plus 1 is true. So Q of n is true for all natural numbers, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. 